On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, why do containers fall off ships? We'll look at the case of the Madrid Bridge. Hi, I'm your host, Sal McCagliano. I'm the chair of the Department of History, Criminal Justice, and Political Science at Campbell University, former merchant mariner and instructor in maritime history. A couple of stories have been hitting right now, and we see these happen all the time, especially in the wintertime. And that is the case of containers falling off container ships. And the story right now that's in the news is that of the Madrid Bridge. And I thought I'd take a moment and talk about why this happens and why we see it as a prevalent issue in the shipping industry and why it continues to happen. So let's go to this story. So this is the latest story that's in G-Captain about this. Uh, Mike Scholler over there has posted this, that the Madrid Bridge cargo collapse as ship unexpectedly departs Charleston. The ship just arrived in Charleston and now she's heading southbound and matter of fact that her latest position was heading southbound out of charleston now the ship is reported losing roughly around 60 containers overboard and about another 80 that have collapsed and this has been an ongoing story this is the very first report that came out a few days ago about the one this is the uh, ocean network express vessel mv madrid bridge losing containers in the atlantic uh, Mike did this story about the initial report that came that took place. It was on January 7th that the initial loss of containers took place. We knew that there was a area of rough seas out there. Mike includes weather. Mike always loves include the weather. It's one of his favorite things to do. And then you see this comes from a report from Nathan Strang over at Flexport. O&E reporting a container stack collapse on Madrid Bridge. AIS track makes it look like she can. Uh, she ran into some issue on about the second, reported not under command, and then started maneuvering to the south, possibly to find calmer seas. And story goes on here with follow up stories on Madrid Bridge. Here we see uh, Madrid Bridge will proceed to Charleston after North Atlantic cargo loss. Story the Madrid Bridge is believed to have lost some 60 containers overboard in the North Atlantic last week. Another 80 damaged and follow up stories continued with that following her track and her reports, including statements from ONE on it. So fairly typical. We've seen this happen before. The biggest loss we have seen on a ship with containers happened last year. And I well, actually two years ago now it was actually in 2019, uh, excuse me, 2020 uh, with the ONE APIS. This is the GCAP story on the ONE Apis, and this was cataclysmic. I mean, when you look at the stacks on this vessel and literally the total collapse of the containers above the main deck, it is absolutely impressive. I mean, no one has seen that type of loss on a vessel. The uh, estimated loss was 1,816 containers that ONE Apis lost. And you would think after a substantial loss like that, things would have been done differently. But as we find out, that's not the case. I'll show you some images that Mike Schiller included in the latest report on Madrid Bridge. So here she is. You can see this is from one of the forward bays right here. So this is your first one. She's at anchor right here. So we're looking at the bow here. There's the bridge and the island right there where the navigation takes place. So we're looking about row six right there. And these containers have gone off the port, the left-hand side of the vessels. These containers have fallen over to the left side closest to the camera. And these are actually tops of containers that have crashed down. So the stack that was closest here to the port side went over the vessel and over the side. Meanwhile, the rest of these have collapsed down. Over here, you can see this a little bit more, a little bit of a different image, still the bridge. We're still looking forward at this time. That's that same stack right there. This is the third row from the aft end of the vessel, aft end of the vessel right there. And one of the things to notice is the forward stack went off on the port side. This stack went off on the starboard side, the right side of the vessel. There's the stack for the vessel right there, four rows back on the very fantail of the vessel. Got some more images here. This is showing you that same stack a little closer. You can see the containers crushed and over on the side. And then right over here, a little bit more images. These are again, the tops of the containers, they're off on their side. So 
this kind of raises the question of, all right, wait a minute, Sal, how are these containers falling over? Aren't they attached in some way? Well, to do that, we once again come with our universal way to explain containers, big Lego. And we're gonna use our big Lego for this. So our big Lego blocks. Now, if you have Lego or what I have here, these versions of Lego blocks, one of the things you know that when you secure your Lego together, they lock in pretty good. They lock in pretty good. There's pretty good strength between them and we can have it. And if you've ever built Lego before, you know one of the tricks for building Lego is to cross connect them, is to basically take your Lego and basically stack them one way like this, red and yellow. And then you put another straight across like that and you create strength, kind of like brick laying. Well, containers don't work that way. They don't work that way for a couple of reasons. One of the first reasons is containers don't link together with eight points like you do on a Lego block like this. Instead, the way they link together is in the very four corners. Flip this upside down. They link in the four corners. And that is the only thing that holds them together are those little cups at the four corners. That is the only thing that's keeping those containers together. And what you have on container ships are these stacks of containers. So here's your container stack. Let's get another one. All of our container stacks right here. So here are our container stacks. Now, again, these are only connected at the corners. And what begins to happen is the ship will rock like this. You get those motions going right there. And what tends to happen is these very top containers, depending on the weights in them, can start getting some motion. The way a ship will rock, and a ship doesn't rock the same exact way. Different parts of the ship rock at different paces. I've been on a ship where the bow was to the port side, the stern was to the starboard side, and you get this really twisting motion in this. And what you get is something called parametric rocking. And what begins to happen is these containers begin to rock. Now, if you're building Lego, you would cross connect these things, but containers, particularly the top containers on container ships, and I'll show you, are not connected except for those little corners. What does this mean? Well, if a ship gets rocking hard enough, and if the weights are improper, you've got too much weight topside, these containers can start to rock like this. And what you can have happen is a container fall. An entire stack can begin to collapse. And when that causes that collapse to happen, you can see a, an entire domino effect happen. And the entire stack can go over like that. And you're sitting there going, well, wait a minute, Sal, there's gotta be a way to secure them. Why are these containers not secured? Let's talk about that. So I found this video on YouTube about how to do container lashing. And I got it muted because we don't need the, the volume for it. But one of the things that this shows you is how the lashing takes place on board vessels. So these are longshoremen heading on board and they're bringing basically the necessary lashing gear to lash the containers together. Now, when you have containers, there are locking mechanisms, twist locks at the corners. The corners of the containers have twist locks on them, which allows them to lock into place. There are little tabs on here that you can pull and they twist and that locks the corners. So the four feet, the four corners of the containers are locked together. You, they can stack. And what you do is you insert between them these little twist locks, and then you can go in and twist them and lock them into place. What you're seeing them do here is putting lashing. You see them right there. Those are the twist locks right there. They're pulling down on them. I'm gonna hold this picture right here for a second. So this gives you a good view of the stern of the vessel. So what they did in that last one, let's go back here for a second, is you see right here, these are the twist locks. They're between the, the four corners of the container. Now notice containers aren't always the same height. Containers can be anywhere from eight feet to eight and a half feet to even high containers, depending on what's available and what's being loaded on. And what you're doing is putting these little hooks on here and then you're pulling down and that's locking the container. That's going to pop the the twist lock and it's gonna twist, it's gonna flip and it's gonna lock into place. And to get it loose, you'll have to pull up on them to release them because now the containers are locked together. 
So now you've got your, your containers stacked. They'll be locked together so that one container is locked into the bottom container to the next container to the next container, and you get your stacks locked in at the four corners. The problem is, as, as you know, if you've ever played with Lego before, when you start stacking Lego after a while, it starts getting a little, little wonky, it starts wanting to wobble and everything, and especially if you're not interlocking them. So how do you prevent that from happening? Let's go on. So stop right there. So in the interior of the ship, the containers are in cell guides. They're in these cell guides. You can see these areas right here. This is where the lashing points are, which we'll talk about in a minute. But within the container, within the ship itself, there are guides that drive the containers down so that when you're using your container crane, you're bringing your container in, they go into the guides, it keeps it from moving and guides them down. Guides them down and you basically twist the corners and then you can start bringing more containers down, keep lowering them down into your ship, keep lowering them down into your ship, and you start bringing them in and you, you do them. Now, within the interior of the ship, they're in those guides. So those guides provide a little bit of rigidity in there. Not enough. It's not enough to keep them. But you're within the, the hull, too. So you have the side of the hull. So the containers aren't flopping around as much. Above deck is where the issue happens. If you look here, this is the bottom stack going across. Now, this is an exceptionally wide vessel. We're looking at two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 cells across, 16 containers across. Remember. Biggest container ships are 24. This is 16 across. You'll notice right here, these X's on the containers. Those are the cross lashings that are put on. You'll notice they're put on this second stack. They're not put on the third level, the fourth level, the fifth level, or the sixth level. And you'll see them do it right here. You'll see how they put these cross lashings on. These are meant to provide that stability to prevent the bottom of the stack from, from moving. And so when they put these on, as you bring the containers in, you see the containers going in right now, see them going inside. This is the crane operator. He's lowering the, crane, uh, the container into the vessel itself. They're going to be fairly locked in. They are not going to move as much. It is the lashings above deck that cause the issues. So in this scene, you're seeing them putting the cross lashings on. These are the turnbuckles with the twists. So on the either the, the very bottom stack or the second to bottom, sometimes the third to bottom, you'll see these cross lashings go on. And these are meant to keep that motion from happening. They're gonna secure the bottom of the stacks. They're gonna secure the bottom of the stacks of the containers. And you'll see them, in this case, they're removing them, but you'll see them put them back on here in a minute. And you see them putting them on. Basic, simple twist, twist locks. You spin them, use a pry bar in there to get them in there and you're able to secure them. You don't drop them down the hole. This is a safety video after all. I wanna show you some of the worst things that happen. But you see them, how they're kind of cross stacking them there. And what that does is it prevents the bottom of the containers or the stack from going. And ships have lashing plans, how you go about securing them. You'll notice that these lashing plans are involving just one or two levels of containers. You don't go all the way to the top because for reasons we'll talk about, you just secure the bottom. And you'll see how they do it. These are the standard turnbuckles. They go in there and they start lashing and securing as they go on. And again, that prevents the containers, the bottom base of the containers from moving and provides stability. So let's go back to our pictures here of Madrid Bridge. So this is the stack, the forward stack that collapsed to the port side of the vessel. To the left side is the bridge. To the, I mean, to the left side is the bow. To the right side is the bridge. You'll see these are the top of the containers right here. And these areas right here are the lashing points. This is where the crew can get in lashing. And you'll see right here, you can see some of the lashings hooked on. So you're talking about lashings up to maybe the fourth high stack right here. You can see those lashings going in. The third one is lashed all the way up here to the fourth one. But the fifth, uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth ones are not. So you have four stacks of containers that are right here. They're stacked up perfectly, but then you're putting another four containers on it like that. And what's happening is you start getting that motion. These top ones are not secured. And remember, I'm locked in here with Lego blocks. I'm not having just the four corners in here. And if you get the motion just right, she's gonna go over just like that. 
And so you lose the beginning to see the stacks. And as one stack goes, the next ones go. Let's look at some more pictures here. Same thing, really good images right here. You'll see that the third stack above is square lashed. And then the next one up, fourth, maybe up and even up to the fifth corner right there, you see, but you have at least three stacks of container or three high containers that are not lashed. They're not lashed at all. Same thing back here. You can see the cross lashings here on the third high stack, maybe one piece up here, fourth or fifth to provide some extra stability in here. Let's go over to this picture. You can see it again here. This is just after the bridge. This is that stern area right here. You can see them third or fourth stacked right here, third, fourth stack, but you still have one, two, three, four stacks above that where the only thing that's holding the, the containers in place are the turnbuckles, on, I mean, are the twist locks on the corners. That's it. And if you hit enough motion and the weights of those top four containers are heavy enough that they can begin to do that rocking, that parametric motion, you can get that weight swaying. And if you get the twisting of the ship just right, you can see them go over. If you notice, again, on this vessel, let's go back and take a look at this one more time. So where this ship loses its containers, it lost it up forward of the house, off to the port side, and it lost it aft off to the starboard side. That's that twist. When those ships get in that twisting motion, again, you expect a ship to kind of turn one way or the other. But understand, long vessels, Madrid Bridge, again, probably eight, 900 feet long. When they get into oceans, again, they're framed. They don't have as many frames as a warship. They're not a very stiff ship. And so those ships are going to twist. You're going to get a twisting motion in the ship. And as that twisting motion happens, the more pronounced that twisting motion is, the greater the snap, the higher you are up from the center of gravity, the more motion you're getting. As old sailors who have been on sailing vessels before climb the mast in a rough sea, that mast is whipping back and forth at a higher rate of speed than any other part of the ship. Same thing is happening with these containers. And when you see on the aft side, the, the containers go off to starboard and on the forward side, they go off to port. That's an indication right there that the ship hit some seas, hit some swells, and they went off. So brings us back to that last question, Sal. Why are they not lashing all the way up to the top stack? Why are they not putting those cross members all the way up? And it's a very simple answer. Money and time. That's it. It's that simple. Money and time. Doing those cross lashings take time. And takes time throwing them off when you come into port. It takes time putting them on when you're in port. And that time translates to money. If you're pulling into port, you got to wait for the longshoremen, stevedores to come on board. Then if your top cells are all lashed, you have to wait for all those to be tor torn down, taken down so that you can start moving containers. Understand as soon as the container ship's up alongside the berth, cranes are coming over, they're getting ready to attach. They're going to start moving cargo in a very short period of time. And they can start throwing off the bottom lashings while those containers are being moved or securing them after they've been put on there while more containers are being stacked above them. It's all a matter of time and money. Now you're saying, well, wait a minute, Sal, you just lost however many containers Madrid Bridge did or the 1800 that ONE Apis did, but is it worth it to slow down and save those containers you've lost versus the time you gain in moving containers at the rate and pace we're moving them now. And that's the issue. Container companies would rather write this off on insurance, take the loss of several hundred containers, or in the case of ONE Apis, 1,800 containers. They'd rather write that off than the time it takes to properly lash and secure those containers. Understand, container ships have grown in length, they've grown in width, but they've also grown in height. And one of the things we've seen with the introduction of the Maersk E-Class and the Triple E-Class is those containers are going higher and higher. And they're taking the risk to stack these containers ever higher. Understand if that top row of containers had not been loaded on board, ONE Apis or maybe Madrid Bridge, you would not have the loss that takes place. But again, the demand is to move containers. You want containers at full capacity. The other issue is the weight of the boxes. Are the weight of the boxes accurately reported to the container ship company, 
to the load planners. So they're not putting extremely heavy boxes on top. They're weighting those boxes down lower so that when the ship gets that rocking motion, when you get that parametric motion going on here, you don't have the heaviest box on top. It's at the bottom, well secured, and you just have some light boxes on top. I'd love to say that's always happening, but I talk to enough people and I know enough about this that I can tell you that's not happening. Weights on containers. You would think when a container carrier picks up a container, it measures the weight, it does, but it needs to transmit that to the ship, to all the cargo handlers. But again, it's not being done enough. And what we're seeing is the loss of containers. Understand loss of containers results in fires. We saw that with Zim Kingston coming into Vancouver this past year. Uh, we've seen it with Express Pearl, the ship that caught fire off, uh, off Ceylon, Sri Lanka, and burned up. And these containers go overboard. They put hazardous material into the ocean. They're a navigation issue. Ask Robert Redford on a sailboat. He, he can prove, he can talk all about this. They are menaces. They're hazards. Yet we're willing to take this risk. It is a measured risk to increase the flow of goods going back and forth. And there's always loss of cargo on a ship. There was spoilage back in the old days. There, there, there was thievery. There was, there was you know, the, the, the longshoremen, the stevedores, the ship's crew would steal things. And now we just take this for granted. And it's part of ocean shipping today. So I hope you enjoyed and understand now why container ships lose their loads. So if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. Please give it a thumbs up. Share it across social media. Please retweet it. Send it out. Send it to your friends. Do, do something. Go ahead. Share it across so we can increase the reach of what's going on with shipping. Leave a comment. Give it a thumbs up. And if you can, if you can, please write down here. My Patreon page will pop up. And if you can give to my Patreon page, that supports me, allows me to do these videos to afford to buy my props. Very high-tech props. You don't get this on many shows. This is high-tech Props. I gotta go give these back to my son right now. He's building something. Well, not something I have his blocks. So until our next episode, Sal.